I want to talk about graduate unemployment in Africa today. Look at that cartoon. Master degree that five years and unemployed. In the past, we educate you to work and help us. Now, we educate you and we work to help you and your children. This is a cartoon from North Africa, Egypt. And look at the next one. This is the Minister of Education. And this person is saying, eh? forget it guys. I have applied for years without success, yet I have a master's. These are graduates looking for jobs. This person is saying, I will work for food. This is illustrative of graduate unemployment in Africa. I captured this message at this site. It's saying, an African summit in Gigali discussed one of the most critical questions for African young people today. How to create enough jobs to address the continent's employment quandary. And look, illustrative. Here is a graduate running, finishing the lab, university. What does he land into? Unemployment. Yes, this is the reality. The summit saw delegates from 90 countries around the world discussing youth unemployment, ways to reach the targeted 50 million African jobs in this year 2020. A little research, and they get this one. UN, unemployment in Africa, there are no jobs for 50% of the graduates. That was 27, 2016. Almost half of the 10 million graduates churned out of 668 universities in Africa on the annual basis do not get a job. Now that was the president of the Coca-Cola Central East Africa and Western Africa saying that. 2017, and we get again from UN, that source, youths account for 60% of all of Africa jobless are got into the World Bank. These are facts, so we are told. In North Africa, the youth unemployment rate at that time was said to be 25%, but it is greater in Botswana the Republic of Congo, Senegal, and South Africa, among others. 2019, just last year, the youth unemployment rate in Africa is expected to exceed 30%. It was 25% previous year. We are now told it is expected to exceed 30% this year, meaning 2019. And young people will continue to be three times, 3.5 times more likely than adults to be unemployment. That is the ILO, the International Labor Organization. Yes, there is unemployment everywhere in Africa. Go to the north, Egypt, look, look at those pictures. Go to the South, South Africa, look, please hire a graduate. 
placards. Go to West Africa. We are suffering unemployment. This is Nigeria. Go to East Africa, Kenya. Look, placards. Graduates. Even in Central Africa. So indeed, there is graduate unemployment everywhere in Africa. Yes. Our graduates graduate into unemployment. There we are. We are churning out graduates. There are no jobs. Graduate unemployment in Africa is a serious issue. Now, in my own view, some causes of Africa's graduate unemployment are those ones. One, there is low absorption ability of our economies. They can't absorb workers. Industry can't absorb workers or low absorb absorbability, low absorption. There is poor employability skills. We're giving students skills that do not help them much to get employed. There is poor entrepreneurial skills. We're churning out graduates who only want to go into wage employment. So in my own opinion, those are three of the many reasons why there is graduate unemployment. One, low absorption, the ability of our economies. Two, unemployability skills. And three, lack of entrepreneurship. And therefore I think that there is a way Africa can create jobs for her graduates. And I'm calling the way the way Africa can create jobs for her graduate. What am I saying? I am saying Africa must design employment creation policies. Problem identification. The graduate unemployment. And let's go around the process. Policy formulation. And then policy adoption, policy implementation, and policy evaluation. Africa must come up with employment policies, and we must evaluate them. In my opinion, our economists need to revisit the circular flow of income, that basic model. Let me see. Yes, we need some policy issues that revolve around the farms, the households, and the government. Yes. Let's talk of policies to reduce interest rates. If our bank can be incentivized to in reduce interest rates, then there will be cheap credit for the industry. And cheap credit, there will be more production, more employment. Business taxation. If we can design innovative policies to reduce, to cut business taxation, then again, there will be more production, more employment. We can also create an employment benefit when the old the unemployed get those benefits, then there will be more expenditure, maybe on the necessities, and more production and more employment. 
We can also have policies that spend on public works, you know, building bridges, building dams. More public expenditure will lead to more production and more employment. But wait, I'm not an economist. So let me leave economics for economists and let me focus on teaching at the university. University News, University World News, Africa Edition. Look, 2019 edition of this, they are telling us about curriculum change. Curriculum change as a solution to undergraduate unemployment. I cannot agree more with that author. May 2019. Of University World News focusing on curriculum change. I want to talk about that in a bit, but then you may want to ask where do I draw my authority to talk about education in Africa? Well, I have 30 plus years of teaching, I have taught at all levels. I've taught at primary level, way back in the 1970s. I've taught at second level. I've taught at college level. And now I'm teaching at university level. And therefore, I have experience to talk about education in Africa. That aside, I hold my PhD in entrepreneurship. I'm currently the African Agribusiness Incubators Network Chairman. That has taken me to a number of countries and therefore I have experience, real-time experience. I'm also a consultant of African Union the, in the African Bureau of Animal Resources. That has also assisted me to look at education in Africa. I'm also a consultant of the African Institute for Capacity Development. That has helped me to interact with scholars. I am a former chairman of African Technology Policy Studies Network, the Kenya chapter, that exposed me to the African environment. I am a former consultant of the African Network for Agriculture, Agroforestry, and the Natural Resource Education, ANAFE. Indeed, I designed a curriculum, a business agri curriculum for the continent, or for that ANAFE, which is implementing it across the continent. I am a former consultant, United Nations Center for Regional Development where I have been doing project management for uh, civil servants and others. So I have, in my own opinion, I have covered enough experience to talk about Africa and the education in Africa. And for that matter, I have discovered that many African universities lack balanced teaching to equip graduates with employability skills. Yes. Balance. In Africa, we need to balance active learning and passive learning. We need to balance those approaches to learning. To teaching. Currently, this is the scenario. We have more of passive learning, receiving information and ideas, and less of active learning, doing, observing, reflecting. That is my observation. 
in Africa, we seem to have forgotten or not embraced some wisdom, educational wisdom, very well. Look at that. Way back in 450 BC, philosopher Confucius, he says, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. Paraphrase it. And it becomes, tell me and I will forget. Show me and I may remember. Involve me and I will understand. That philosophy of teaching at the university is not well impressed in my own gathering observation. That was 450 BC. In the 1900s, Albert Einstein says, this quotation has been disputed but mainly attributed to, to Albert Einstein, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different re results, that is insanity. Repeating, teaching, over and over, same method. He goes on to say, if you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. If we keep on teaching the way we were teaching, we shall still get the same result, the same graduates. He also says, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Those words of wisdom have not, in my opinion, well, have not been well impressed at our universities. Come the 1930s, and we have John Dewey. He says, if we teach today's students as we taught yesterday's, we rob them of tomorrow. I will add, if I teach my students like I was taught, then I'm robbing my students of their future. And of course, John Dewey goes on to say, we do not learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. That's deep. And come 1960s, then Edgar Dale comes up with the learning pyramid. And he says there is active and there is passive learning. The active, the I mean the passive methods of teaching and learning, the lecture method, giving students readings, using audiovisual demonstration. The active discussions pra practiced by doing and even presentation teaching others. And you can see above the line, the traditional methods of learning and teaching. Below the line, differentiated. African universities lack differentiated, or they are low on differentiated methods of teaching. We are still stuck with the tradition. But okay, what is inactive or active and passive learning? There it is. Active learning, internship, research experience, practice, Students learn by doing something and reflecting on their experience. It requires time, effort, and funding for individual attention. Perhaps that is what has kept it. Because it requires time. It requires funding. And therefore, we have chosen the easier way. Lectures, that is passive. Lecture, some discussions. Valuable for disseminating basic knowledge to large groups. Because again, we have large holds, large groups of students because of population growth. Therefore, we have chosen. You see, students don't process material as deeply. And therefore, that doesn't prepare students well for their future careers. So we have stuck on traditional 
we have stuck on passive methods and we have not embraced the active very well. Now back to John Dewey. He says, give the pupils to do not something to learn and the doing is of such a nature as to demand thinking, learning, natural research. Using those arguments and that school of thought, that philosophy, John Dewey created a method called project-based learning. It is a teaching method in which students gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time to investigate and respond to an authentic, engaging, and complex question, problem, or challenge. So we can now differentiate the symbol model of traditional versus project-based learning. There is the traditional. We give students lectures. Students memorize our lectures. The knowledge we have given them is memorized. The examinations, we test students on how much they remember how much they memorize what we give them in class. That is the traditional model. The project-based, which is also called problem-based, students are assigned a problem. Students identify what they need to do and to know. Then students present a solution of the problem. In the details, yeah. Content, knowledge, and skills. Authenticity, relevance, real world challenge, problem. Inquiry, students start inquiring after they got the knowledge, they looked at the real world problem. They go into inquiry, cooperative learning, students' voice and choice, give them the, that democracy, collaborative learning in groups, in industry. That way, as we interact with industry, they get employability skills, community partnerships, Every, at every stage, we are being real, we are relevant by relating to real world. Feedback, publicly present the product or the solution that they were working on. They reflect on that and there it is, the cycle. That is problem, project, best planning. And I want to say I have successfully adapted, not adopted, I have successfully adapted this method. And this is how mine goes. Look, the Buisa model, I'm talking of a 14-week semester. I start four weeks, animated PowerPoint assisted lectures. Two weeks, my students go into groups group-based reading, brainstorming, real-world problem identification, and project formulation. Then six weeks, the group-based research, investigations, and solutions formulation. And two weeks, they come to present their solutions for peer review, peer discussion, and perfection. And therefore, you can see, I have passive learning. I hear and I forget. I have both passive and active learning. I hear, I forget, I see, I remember. Then, transitioning to active learning. I do and I understand. Active learning, I do and understand. I have adopted, adapted John Dewey's model and it has worked for me. 
you can sample some of the results of my version of project-based learning. Industry has acknowledged the interactions with my students because students in the six weeks that I've shown you, they go out there in the rest of the industry, surrounding community of the university, they come up with a problem. These are just some of the feedback that I get from my, uh, I mean, from industry. That is an acknowledgement letter from that company. And what are they saying, for example? They are telling my students, whom they have named them there, Omar, Sophia, Mutuku, Maureen, and so on. Your proposal was chosen as one of the proposals to be forwarded to the management for consideration. Final decision will be made upon serious perusal and a discussion on your analysis and management. This is this. My students go out, identify a problem, work with the industry, and they offer a solution to the industry. Look at another one from this Spavit Company Limited. Again, the students are there, name. The following students from JKU are pursuing Bachelor of Science in Business Innovation Technology. I have witnessed the exceptional contribution that the students have made to our organization. Not only are they hardworking, but also dedicated. I therefore enthusiastically commend the students for such a great job done. This coming, and these students are in the second year. By the time they go to third year, to fourth year, they would have perfected. Look at that one now from another company. I was especially taken by students' creative mind and their independent work ethic. They are the best students I've ever interacted with. I have no hesitation whatsoever in recommending the above students to any future prospective employee. And the students are there. You know, Karen Kideka, Petronila Antenya, Esther Mueni, second year, in second year. Look at that from another private company that they interacted with. I am honored to have been part of the holistic learning approach you have adopted. My greatest fulfillment will be to see these young minds and many others thrive as they practice entrepreneurship and by the expertise they have obtained from their training to see them offer market fit solutions to the many problems bedeviling Africa and the world at large. I look forward to a future that will be brightened by the experience. This is that's the, that paragraph that you can read from Sandy Limited in Nairobi. That was last year, November 2019. I had even Equity Bank, one of the biggest, most successful banks in the region. My students in the right to the Equity Bank. We appreciate the study and the recommendations given. As though that's not enough, you can watch videos from my YouTube that are covering this one. is a video of a student who started a business while still on campus. This one, a student, I mean students, who make fun and radio from electronic waste. These are students who make bracelets for examination. They make bracelets innovative research for their examination. These are students in my unit of mentorship. They actually mentored peers on drug abuse, successful so. Students helping a community to design portable stores. They interact with the community, solve community problems. A PhD student graduate who has adopted my style of teaching. Students convert an examination project into a campus business. They are now doing business and even helping their parents to offset some of the expenses. Students are show showcasing their solar backpack innovation. Students scamper 
a university chair for the examination. Here, I am explaining my teaching methodology. Here, my method of teaching entrepreneurship again. I'm elaborating on the same. Here, students present their website examination project. So it's not just a physical, tangible project. Students even come up with, you know, apps. And lastly, watch this, my award-winning teaching approach as I presented it in Washington. So what am I saying? I want to go back. I want to go back right from where we started and look at that slide. University World News. Curriculum change, a solution to graduate employment. And with curriculum change must come method of teaching. I'm convinced, I am persuaded that that way we shall improve the situation. We cannot keep doing what we are always doing and expect different results. We cannot keep teaching like we taught and expect our graduates to go and get employed. There is now graduate unemployment. Everywhere in Africa we go, there is unemployment. There it is. Our graduates, we are graduating, turning them into unemployment. And there they are. Africa, everywhere we go, north, south, west, east, central, there is unemployment. Let's look at our approaches again and let's churn out graduates that can be absorbed by industry. Thank you and I hope Together, we can do something.